Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. In this video, I'll be looking at the recently updated functionality that allows us to conditionally format line graph labels. Okay, so let's get started. So every month, more or less, Power BI, as you probably know, release updates to the Power BI desktop functionality. Now in July 2021, there was a, an update and in here, it caught my eye was, um, was this update here, conditional formatting for more properties. And there's a list of additional conditional formatting options that have been added. Now the one that really caught my eye was this data label colors. And the reason that, that this caught my eye is because uh, at first glance, it looks like we could conditionally format the color of the data labels based on the value of that label or the data point. However, all is not what it seems. And I'm going to talk through what the actual functionality offers and why it's um, this update is, is not exactly what I was anticipating and is not exactly as useful as it could have been. Okay, so I'm just going to go and quickly create a line graph. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I really wanted to explain to anyone that might be sort of stumped as to what's happening with this conditional format and what is it, how it's conditionally formatting these data labels because um, it took me a little while just to suss it out. So I'm going to create a... I'm going to use the date here as the axis and I'm going to create a trend of the number of work orders in Batlog. So I've already created a measure here. It's the number of Batlog hours, actually. So the number of man hours in our Batlog. So this will be a pretty straightforward trend here. And we can go and just make a couple of adjustments here, just really just to make this look a little bit um, a little bit neater. Yeah, just make that less thick. So we've got a trend here of the number of hours in our backlog. We can see it's sta stable throughout um, the start of March. We've got a big drop here and then it sort of starts to tip up again at the end of March. So new functionality that's been added is under this data label section here. So I'm going to switch that data labels on and we can see that we've got these data labels covered here and not every data label, not every data point has got a label. Um, I've covered that in a previous video. Um, however, under here, the color has now got this option here, this FX option, which indicates that you can use conditional formatting rules to determine what the color of this label is. So just now it's gray and you can see here, we can, we can make it any color we want really, but it's, um, Oh, I never selected that. Hold on. I don't think. Yep, so here's a red here. So we can make it red or whatever we want. So I'll just refer, revert that to, to default for just now. And we'll stick this back on. So if we open up the functional or the conditional formatting options, we've got a color scale um, and we've got rules and we've got a field value. So if we look at the rules, and it may be that you want, and this is what I was hoping it would give us, it would, the ability to conditionally format a color for those which exceed a particular value. So if I said, okay, anything above, say, 210,000, I want to be red. So let's go and oh, I need to drag this back up in. Here we go. So rules. And in here, we're going to go into our work order variables and we're going to go for our backlog hours. And if the value is greater than or equal to 210,000 and less than or equal to max, maximum, so whatever the maximum value is, then I want this to be red. Okay, I want it to be red. I want the data label to be red. And here, yeah, so if the value for backlog hours is greater than that, and look what's happened, everything's red. So I'm kind of thinking to myself, have I done something wrong with that sort of formula? So what I've done is I've taken a copy of this just to kind of try and understand what's going on here. And I'll convert that into a table. And then I'm going to add in Add the same conditional formatting here. So it's got the values. It's got the values for each date. So let's click on here and go to conditional formatting. 
We want to conditionally format the bot lock hours. Uh, we're going to conditionally format the font. And I'm going to use exactly the same rules. If the value is greater than 210,000, just need to remember and make it a number this time, and less than whatever the maximum is, then I want it to be red. Okay, so we can see that that's working fine. So what is going on here? So first of all, what is happening is if you can only conditionally format all or none of the data values. Okay, so if you've got a chart, you can conditionally format every value or or or, no, or none of the values essentially. So that's um, that's one drawback that I think is is a little bit of an oversight. I would have liked to have been able to conditionally format just those values which were over the two hundred ten thousand. Now, so how how is it conditionally formatting this? Well, what it's actually taken is the total value here. Now, the reason I know this is if I go back in to here and look at the data labels and go to this FX again. And if we say is greater than or equal to 210,000 and rather than maximum, if I put this in as being 5,775,000 uh, 5, 5, right, less than or equal to that value, then we can see it's still red, okay, because it's higher than the, the value, the total value here, um, or the conditionally formatting formula is saying, well, anything above 200,000 and less than or equal to this value will we'll conditionally format every one of these red. Now, if I then nudge this up to just over, just by one, to here, so if it's greater than 200,000 and less than this value here, then apply the conditional formatting. Well, this value here, um, 6 million, 574,885 is less than 6,574,886. And we can see, uh, it's then equal to 554, less than or equal to that. Ah, sorry, 84, I need to put it. Okay, so the value is 85. If it's, so it has to be less than or equal to 84, then you can see the conditional format disappears. Okay, I just got the wrong way round. So it's a bit pointless, really, if I'm being brutally honest, because why would you want to conditionally format every single one of the values on there based on the total value of all of these values added together? You, you just wouldn't, in my mind, you would never do that. So there may be some other options there, but to me, it's a little bit of a... Um, They've given us something that looks as if it would be great, and then it's it's not quite delivering the same functionality as a table here. And behind this is a table, so I'm I'm not 100% sure why that's not not. Um, there'll be a technical reason for that. I'm, I'm positive, but not as good as it seems. So in case you're puzzled, uh, I took a little bit of time to think of that because I thought it could never be that they're looking at the total value of all of these data points added together to condition to, to look at the conditional format but that's what's happening in this example here so it looks like a good update but um, be wary um, I, I, I really can't see a use for it at the moment this moment in time so if you're struggling and you're sort of pondering what, what what's happening here then hopefully this video has helped you out okay so just a, a nice short one this week and um, if you um, if you've got any comments on how you've used it in the past or how you might use that type of conditional formatting, this data label conditional formatting, then leave it in the comments. It'd be great to, to share it with myself and anyone else that's look, looking at this video. But apart from that, if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, then click the subscribe button and press the wee bell. And I'll talk to you in the next video.